figured I'd go ahead and demonstrate how I do filigree clay, which is basically coils of polymer clay um, used as decoration. I've got it set up right now. I have um, some coils ready and um, some ropes ready. And I wanted to show that I use a clay gun. This is the version I use. It's an older version. Um, they do make a new one by Makin's, but I don't actually have that one. I don't own it. This um, version, uh, the clay goes inside the gun and you have little tips that you put on the tip that uh, will shoot out the clay in whatever shape the tip is in. And this is the one I used for these particular ropes of clay. You can roll them by hand, but I've never been able to be, you know, have a consistent rope. It always is kind of lumpy and bumpy, so I would rather use the clay gun. Um, because it is so hard to express the clay using the clay gun, sorry, you uh, can use a um, caulking gun um, to push it through, which gives you a very consistent rope. And this is a multicolor rope. I use two different colors of clay. Um, basically a Skinner blend. If you don't know what that is, that's where two colors are gradiated from one color to another. And I used red and blue. So I kind of get a purple towards the middle. I'll show you how I roll one out real quick. So either it's according to what, what color you want in the middle. I've got multicolor ones. I've got some that start with red in the middle, some that start with purple, or the bluey color. I'll, um, every time I've expressed the clay from the clay gun, it has its own um, bend to it. So I just follow that bend because it's easier and less breakage. You do want your clay conditioned pretty well because you will get cracks otherwise. And I just start the coil like so and then I'll lay it on my surface. You don't want to put this on your furniture unless you're going to do a really good cleanup afterwards because it will cause furniture damage. And I'll rope the coils around it making sure not to leave any gaps because the technique that I'm going to use the gaps will cause a lot of problems. And you're just going to around it. My dog is panting under the table. <laughs> She's scared of the dishwasher which is running right now. And then once I get to the end, just press it up against it just enough to keep it stable. And then I use the blade, sharp blade, to uh, lift it off the surface. And then I'll use that back side of it because it's a little flatter. So, I'll find a um, cutter, a circular type cutter that is about the same size around the bend part as what the coil is going to end up being. So um, this was the closest one I had and it, it fits the curve of the coil. I want a piece of clay for the base. I'm going to make the clay base bigger than what I actually want the project to end up so if you're making a barrette, you're going to make it larger than what your barrette would be. Or if you're making a pendant, you want it larger than the pendant will be so that you can cut the edges and have a smooth edge. I'll take my, ma my main coil that I want to be the center. And I'm going to go just a hair in and cut off that end piece, which will give me a rounded and you can hold on to these little bits and chunks because you may need them in the end. And then I'm going to press my next coil up against it. You can see how nicely that rounds off so that you don't have... I used to cut them out with the X-Acto blade to that shape and then I found out that if I do this I actually do much better. And you can just go around however you want it. I'm going to cut it here. And then um, take those bits out. And you can see I'm working off of my base clay because the clay will stick to itself pretty easily. And you um, don't want to get it all on your base and then try to cut it off. It'll make a mess. It'll be really difficult to uh, move around.
there. And then um maybe one there. And I'm gonna try to keep these outside edges away from my center. Um they just don't look very clean right in the center. I'm gonna do one more down here. Just clip that up. And then once I get it all together the way I like it, and you can do it any way you want, any cuts you want. If you want it to be fully in the center, you could cut the outside pieces and push them up against the center so that you have a full coil in the center or, you know, any way that you'd prefer to do it. And I'm going to move this stuff out of my way. I'm not going to use these pieces. And I'm going to run my blade underneath the hole, pushing towards the table to, uh, so I'm going to loosen them behind. I'm going to put it on my base image. And before you press down, you want to adjust any pieces that look a little bit off to you. Some of these pieces have come apart a little bit. Get that out of the way. And then just press it down with your fingers. You don't really need to roll it out. You'll mess up your coils. And then I'm going to take a another cookie cutter that I have. That's a little bit too big. And I like to use this one for pendants because it's just a nice size. And then wherever you want to cut it out at. Press down. No, I'd only roll a few amount of coils. If I was making, say, a bread, I'd roll a lot more coils. And this will come off of this clay if you wanted to reuse it. It's just a little difficult to get it off cleanly. And that leaves me with the um, pendant shape. And I like to actually use a lot smaller coils whenever I'm doing a pendant that size because it looks so much nicer. And what you can do is take your last coil roll it around the edges. Pretty much shaking my table. Then you have a nice pendant, and then just you can coil this around a uh, putting knitting, knitting needle or something that size, and then use it as your bell. I could have put that on there. Anyway, so you'd make a bell, and then you. You could use that as a pendant. Bake it in the oven at the temperature that is required for the clay for the amount of time for that thickness. And it's a, probably 15, 20 minutes, 375 for this clay. 275 for this clay. And you have your little filigree pendant and you can make it bigger or smaller. I actually have another one but I don't know what I do with it. There's how you do, how I do filigree and it actually turns out pretty nice. Thank you for watching.